Welcome, everyone. It's great to be here with you today. Thank you for joining our webcast. My name is Ben Henderson, Senior Security Engineer here at Microsoft, and I have the honor of being here with the amazing Innocent Wafula, Senior Product Manager for Security Copilot. Innocent, how are you today? I'm doing good. How about you? Thanks for having me today, Ben. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm excited about this. You know, a Security Copilot's been near yeah. and dear, dear, near and dear to my heart since. Gosh, since it launched, uh, we've been working together. Sure. Wonderful. Well, I have some great questions for you, you know, working with security co-pilots and working with our customers. And I know they would love to hear your perspective on this, but let's start with the basics. What are AI agents and how do they differ from the tools that we have been working with so, so far in cybersecurity? Yeah, absolutely. Great place to start. So I think the the way to look at agents is that they're like a new category of software that leverage the power of large language models uh, to plan, reason, and take actions to achieve goals without following a predetermined path. And that's really the key thing there, that they are not, um, they don't follow a predetermined path to arrive at their output. And that's what really gives them this agency. After all, they are called agents. And I always say that an agent must have some agency. So this is really like the key it. difference. Th that ability to tap into a large language model, which kind of confers some uh, human intelligent or cognitive capabilities to be able to do certain tasks that weren't possible before to be delegated to uh, machines or software. So this is really the difference that's happening here. I love that and I will be using it. Agents need agency that make that really makes a lot of sense. So why yeah. now? To illustrate this much more clearly, let me um, show you here in a moment how this actually works. So the whole flow of how an agent actually works and the components that are in there. So it begins with the agent itself. So normally agents react to triggers. This trigger could be manually executed. It could be an alert arriving and the agent seizing that alert and then proceeding to start to action it. And then the first thing that the agent will do, and this starts to show that unique capability that agents have in relation to other uh, traditional types of, of software, is that it's actually able to plan, to figure out, I have this task, how am I gonna go about it? The next thing it would do is to pick up context from either long-term memory or short-term memory. So the way to think about this is, for example, the agent might actually tap into its long-term memory to get some insights into how it's been directed by the user in terms of uh, how it should handle certain specific situations that are uh, specific to the customer's environment, which is another great thing that uh, or rather great advantage that agents have because they're actually able to learn over time and get better. So once it goes through that process, gets a context from the short-term or the long-term memory, it now, again, autonomously decides what is the best tool to perform this task. So it goes into its toolbox, selects the tool that it requires to perform the job, and then executes that tool. So that tool could be making an API call, invoking a plugin, and more recently, uh, tapping into an MCP server. And again, throughout all this process, you'll see up there that it's an iterative process. And this is where the recursive reasoning aspect of agents come in, meaning because they are not following a predetermined path, if the path that they originally set out to follow doesn't result in the outcome that they are expected to produce, they have that intelligence to say, you know what, I have another, I'll try another tool, I'll try another route until I get uh, this job done. So uh, in summary, the key characteristics that distinguish them from typical software or the traditional tools that we've been using to solve these types of problems, that ability to reason recursively, the autonomy to plan and to take different routes to reach the goal, and the ability to take the right action based on the plan that it's made, and then the ability to adapt over time without necessarily being reprogrammed. These are inputs that come from the user as natural language that, hey, you know what? In our environment, we disregard this type of alerts. Don't worry about it. And the agent will learn. Next time, it, it's not going to uh, worry about that particular alert. So that's really uh, the distinction that agents bring uh, to the picture. Wow. That is so... That's such a great graphic, and it's such a great way to view agents, the iterative process of that task completion that's learning for our customers, businesses, yeah. 24 hours a day. It's always this is a constant process. Let me ask you this. What is driving this shift right now from your right. perspective? You have a view into all of Microsoft. What's driving mm -hmm. this shift to AI agents? 
Yeah, I, I think it goes back to the perennial problem. So too much work to be done in cybersecurity, too few people to do it. So right, <laughs> lots right. of alerts. And with the digital transformation that is just continuing, we, we, I don't think we can expect the number of alerts to reduce. So this is, is a challenge that's been there for a while. But what's changing now is that with the rise of LLMs, it's now made possible uh, new, a new class of AI apps. So these apps that are now powered by large language models and are able now to do tasks that require some amount of reasoning, and then they have this uh, uh, level of autonomy. This is really what's changing. So that means that we can now progressively delegate some of these tasks that human beings had to do because we have some level of intelligence within the machine that is essentially being brought about by large language models that are powering agents. So I think this is the shift that's happening and we are going slowly by slowly um, delegating more and more tasks to agents um, and, and seeing how they're making a difference for us. That's awesome. What is, what is the role Microsoft Security Copilot specifically playing in this transformation? Yeah, so as Microsoft, we really stepped up to empower defenders. Uh, what we've done is that we now have a fleet of agents uh, that are able to help customers with certain tasks. Um, we have fast party agents. We also have agents from our ISV partners. In total, we have around about 40 agents and counting. Wow. What yeah. all agents are available today for customers to use? That's amazing, 40 of them. And yeah. I, I'm assuming they're growing uh, every day. Yeah, sure. The, 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 the list continues to grow. and and. Uh, um, I, I can show you here in a moment what we actually have. So let me pull yeah, up. That sounds uh, great. I know agents. we have you know first party Microsoft agents, we have third yes. party agents, and then sure. agents mul agent multiplications with all the agents that s customers yeah. are building for their own. A exactly. So so this is where you start. So you you come to the of course the security core pilot portal, and then you have an option down here. Uh, to to access the store. So this is newly launched at uh, MS Secure. Uh, what you'll find here is that you can filter by our first party agents. So these are the ones we've got oops, six of them. Uh, access review agent is the latest in the fleet uh, re announced recently. We've got the fish triage agent that's gaining a lot of traction, conditional access agent and so on. And then we have our partners as well. So remember security is a team sport. So we do not claim to cover all angles and we are very happy to partner with our ISV, ISVs. And uh, here they are with uh, quite a number of agents and growing, but that's not all. So if you wanted to build your own agent, so let's say you say, well, you know what? I want to build my own app, this niche use case or this specific use case that's currently not covered. No worries, we, you are welcome as well. What you can do is that you can build the agent. You could do it declaratively. If you think about, or if you're familiar with Microsoft Copilot Studio, you can just say what kind of agent you want, natural language, and the agent is built. So that's one of the ways you can do it. If you are a pro coder, that's also fine. You, you can build it in your own ID environment and then come in and upload your YAML file and deploy your agents and you're ready to go. So that is so, Cool. <laughs> Just so that, you know, and what I love about it is that, and I, you hear this a lot at Microsoft, you know, now, which it's so true, the AI is becoming the new UI, the new user interface. You have the full power of full code, or you could just write a prompt. And it is amazing. Let me ask you this question. What real world use cases and impact have you seen? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we have had uh, reports from several customers reporting significant uh, reduction times, especially in triage of the user reported fish alerts. In fact, one customer reported that this agent, the fish triage agent, is serving them nearly 200 hours a month. Uh, what it does, of course, is take this numerous user reported fish false positive alerts and deals with them. So um, giving the analyst time back. And we're also getting similar feedback from the early adopters of other agents, so such as the conditional access optimization agent, the vulnerability remediation agent in Microsoft Intune is also making a difference uh, for our customers. And with the recent launch of the access review agent, we are uh, looking forward to hearing from customers as well. This agent is going to proactively uh, scan access reviews in your tenant, analyze any identified reviews, uh, gather extra insights, and then generate recommendations giving you an option for or giving a recommendation to approve or deny and a justification as to why uh, the agent reached that conclusion. So looking forward to getting feedback from that one as well. That sounds great.
Let me. That sounds really yeah. great. It's so transformational having worked in SOC operation centers, mm-hmm. deployed security programs to be able yeah. to, you know, leverage an agent, you know, to do that. But let let's talk for a moment, putting on our mm-hmm. my CISSP hat or our, our security yeah. hat. Let's talk about risks, right? Risks and ethics, sure. and you know, the road ahead. You know, yeah. like for example, customers, you know hallucinations right we have now mm-hmm. you know a lot of uh, rag and uh grounding that we can help to reduce hallucinations what else yeah. you know what other yeah. what are what other risks can we mitigate or are we mitigating yeah. today yeah yeah so first of all hallucinations are an inherent challenge with large language models and this really stems from the way they are trained so that problem is not going away for a while but as you said yes we can't do something about it and we are doing something about it you you mentioned one of them uh, retrieval augmented generation so what this means is that uh, there is a base model that's been pre-trained uh, but now especially in the case of security copilot we are actually dealing with information, unless you ask it a generic question, it is actually using information from your environment. So let's say Sentinel alerts, Defender alerts, that means it's already grounded in that aspect because it's not making up alerts. It's it's working on the basis of real alerts from your environment. So that helps to minimize hallucinations. That That's one of them. Um, the other one is continuously tuning the model. So that's something that uh, we also do. And then also, Agents themselves are a strategy to reducing hallucinations because agents are built to address narrowly scoped tasks. So if you think about the agents I've just shown you here, we've got the fish triage agent. It doesn't pretend to do anything else. It just does fish triage. You have the access review agent. That's exactly what it does. And what that means is that you can now limit the scope of inputs. And when you limit the scope of inputs, you're limiting ambiguity. And that also helps eventually with the output. So that's that's another uh, way to, to think about how we are addressing uh, the problem of, of hallucinations. The other one is the most effective one, and this is the human in the loop. So at the end of the day, right. you will see in all these agents, there will be uh, a place where the human is required to approve the recommendation. So you're not just expected to take everything that comes from the agent. So you, you have that final say, say you know what, uh, I know my environment better. This one I'm not gonna go with, I'll go with the other one. So those are the strategies that uh, we are employing to to build trust and to, to help our customers have confidence in adopting the agents and our other AI solutions. That's awesome. That is that's really great. I love that Microsoft, you know, being a, a security practitioner myself, I mm-hmm. love that Microsoft puts security, trust, yeah. and safety first, right? Yeah. Our responsible AI stack and our secure mm-hmm. future initiative. What are you hearing from customers about ethical and regulatory concerns around the world in relation to AI yeah. and AI security? Yeah, of course, those are always going to be there. And the thing is, remember, AI apps are a special class of software. They have this ability to exercise some human cognitive abilities, and that's what sets them apart and requires a different approach to addressing the the legitimate concerns of our customers. So indeed, uh, we as Microsoft, we have the six responsible AI uh, principles that guide all our AI work, not just for security copilot, literally any AI products that we build have to go through this rigorous process of reviews. So the fairness, reliability and safety, inclusiveness, transparency, and and all those six principles, we we strictly follow them to make sure that uh, we are kind of self-regulating in in that sense. And we also comply with uh, other regulations that are in force. Uh, Some are mandatory, some are discretionary. Uh, So things like GDPR, we are compliant with those, HIPAA and several others. That's wonderful. I mean, that aligns with what we've been doing in the cloud, so it just makes sense. Uh, yep. Let me let me ask you one last question. I know your time is sure. valuable, but let me get <laughs> one last question, if I may. Yes. Give us a little treat, a little sneak preview. What can we look forward to as this technology yeah. evolves in the cybersecurity space? Right. So I think as the technology evolves, we are going to see more compute capacity coming online. I mean, if I'm not wrong, there are data centers being built almost on a daily basis. So that that's one thing that's going to make uh, that's going to bring in more capacity and we should be able to do more with that. I think the other thing is learning from the current set of use cases. So this is bringing it down to the copilot uh, scope. Uh, we already have a couple of agents out there. I've shown you uh, which ones they are. So, of course, and in my role, this is part of my role is to gather feedback from customers. What do they think about the agents we've already released? Are they meeting the requirements? So we are constantly improving on those. And at the same time, we are also 
um, having a pipeline of new agents that are coming. So being able to address even more and more complex use cases in the future, those are the things that we are working on and we are building on the experience and on the learnings that our customers have graciously enabled us to get through this preview and public preview and, and launch phases. So that's that's uh, one of the things. The other one is, is securing agents. I mean, the thing is, it's not in question that agents have got transformational capacity and potential. Nobody is, is arguing about that. But I think the only thing that's going to dampen adoption or raise questions and, and raise blockers to adoption is the security of those agents. So that's another area that we are doubling down on, um, working on it already. And we do have a couple of products out there and uh, making them better as well. And the idea here is to really secure the entire stack from the infrastructure to the models themselves, and all the way up to the, the applications or the agents and to really um, give our customers that confidence that yes, we do have AI agents. They can do a lot of wonderful things but they can also do them securely. I love that, that we can bring the whole Microsoft security platform and the Microsoft platform to bear on yes. this new agentic journey. Thank Absolutely. you so much, Innocent, for sharing all this with me. You are my favorite product manager in all of Microsoft. Will you come back and join me again when we have more agents and more to talk about? Absolutely. I always love to talk to you, Ben. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Until <laughs> next time, anybody and everybody watching this, ask us questions in the chat, Innocent, and, we'll, and I will be reviewing them. Thanks again, everybody. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.